Kicking off the 2023 season in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, the featherweights and light heavyweights will headline PFL1 on April 1st. 2022 featherweight champion Brendan Lochname will be facing MMA veteran Marlon Marias in the main event. And in the co-main, it's 2022 PFL light heavyweight champion Razor Rob Wilkinson against big new signing Tiago Maqueta Santos. I come from a real gritty place in Manchester where it's fighting and it's pure fighting. Combination unloading here from Brendan Lockney! Brendan Lockney puts down! Six points! Lockney with a shot right hand. Beautiful combination, Brendan Lockney. I left with a goal though. I left the United Kingdom with a goal and said, I'm going to come back a world champion and a millionaire. I'm not going back until that happens. Lochnane's early years with the PFL gained him valuable experience on the road to becoming the 2022 featherweight champion. with that jab. A solid shot by Bubba Jenkins. Wow, great defense there by Brendan Lockney. Oh! Oh, big right hand. That hurt him. Good right hand. Bubba stumbled. Lockney jumps on for the kill and pounds away with the right hand. He lands a knee and that's it. Brendan Lockney, 2022 PFL featherweight champion. Lochnane's only loss to date in the PFL was to the undefeated 19-0 2021 PFL featherweight champion, Movlid the Killer Habulayev. Unable to fight in the 2022 season, the killer is back in 2023 to claim his title. Begging the question. Will Lochnane have what it takes to defeat the undefeated? Lochnane's 2023 debut as PFL featherweight champion of the world will be against MMA veteran Marlon Marias. Looking for redemption, Marias has been diligently training at American Top Team, preparing for what could be the fight of his life. PFL to control your destiny, you have to win. And you have to win every fight. I love this thing, you know, I love MMA. I love to compete. I love to test my skills. I love to see how things that I do every day will work against opponents, against the best in the world. And I know in the PFL, especially in the 145 pounds division, they, they have the best in the world, I know. And that's how you test yourself. If you want to test yourself, you got to put your skills against the best. I want to take that million dollars, and 2023 will be my year. We are competing seven months, 10 of the best 145 pounders in the world. We are fighting against injuries. We're fighting against the time, against make weight. You're fighting against the best in the world. In the PFL, there's no time to enjoy any lights. You have to win and you have to defend right away. You are a champion just in the last year, this season. You're normal like me. You're going to have to fight to get to the belt. But Brandon, he's, he's no joke. I know how he fights. April 1st, I'm testing myself against one of the best in the world. 
One thing I can do for sure every day is look myself in the mirror and know that I gave my all and that I put everything on the line. I'm excited to bring the PFL to number one in the world. Let's go. Another highly anticipated fight is the Bubba Badman Jenkins and Chris Wade rematch scheduled for PFL 1. The two wrestlers went head to head in the 2021 semifinals, with Wade dominating by unanimous decision. I really feel it's my time, think it's my year. Yeah. Bubba Jenkins, he is now one fight away from fighting for gold himself. Bubba Jenkins walking in and getting a little bit of love from Ray Lewis, Super Bowl champion. Bubba Jenkins, the favorite here. Right to the center we go. Bubba goes right up over the top of Chris Wade. And now Wade, he's in on a takedown attempt. Nice cradle. Nice cradle by Chris Wade. This is a master class in control. Chris Wade celebrating the victory even as the clock ticks down. Chris Wade insulting the wound of Bubba Jenkins there. Here's the good news for Bubba. He learned something here tonight. The humble pie that Chris Wade served me, it tasted like death. It tasted like acid. I'm still running from that moment. I'm still running from that night, that feeling. It's not even like a, a chase towards the belt and championship. It's a run and a fear from ever seeing that look on my fans again, on my family on my son, so my daughter, you know, I disappointed a lot of people. It was a definite understanding from my perspective that like, no, we dropped the ball and we need to get that back. Now, the bad man will have a chance to avenge his loss and fight his way back to the championship. I have no way to go back. I can only go forward. There is no quit. We can only get to the top. In this weight class, like, we genuinely do not like one another. I've been knocking at the door, like, trying to kick this thing down to get that belt. I didn't want no easy road. I've never had an easy road in this sport. It's always been up and down. Give me the hardest ones you can find, and I'll keep taking them out like that. And then what can you say about my world title then? Coming up next, a look at Rob Wilkinson's 2022 championship win and his first opponent of the season, one of the most vicious finishers in MMA, making his PFL debut, Tiago Santos. Razor Rob Wilkinson took the PFL by storm in 2022 finishing his first three fights all by knockout, earning him a spot in the championship against Omari Akhmedov. on the line, Wilkinson came out swinging against Doc Madoff, ending the epic battle with a TKO in the second round. Finishers. Wilkinson really trying to set up that right uppercut. There's that right hand over the top. Blitzing attack here from Robert Wilkinson. Rob Wilkinson is swinging hard. Oh, that left landed. Wilkinson bolts his way into top position. Wilkinson is trying to go for the kill here. Another combination from Wilkinson. Oh, nice oh, knee. There's a leaping knee. Good 
right hand again. Another blitzing attack. Oh, boy. Blood pouring from the face of Omari Akhmedov. Oh, nice combination there by Wilkinson, a 2-1. Oh, and an uppercut. How is Omari sticking around here? Wilkinson really oh, pouring it out. Oh. Less than 30 seconds in the second round. Body shots now. Omari's fighting back, though. Oh, wow. Uppercut and a hook. Oh, big uppercut. There's the bell. Wow. Bell two in wow. the books. How in the heck? What a fight. Fight's over. Omari Akhmedov. The doctor says no more. Robert Wilkinson becomes the first PFL champion from Australia. Tasmania's first MMA world champion now gears up for what could be the toughest fight of his career against Tiago Macheta Santos in PFL 1's co-main event. Four fights in seven months. I think one of the fights was seven weeks apart. I've made some new goals for myself and I want to be the, considered the best light heavyweight in the world. These big names, these you know, top 10 guys uh, are the guys I want to be fighting to kind of show that. I think at the moment I'm, I'm the best fighter there is and I'm only just getting better. I feel like I'm improving all the time, which is what really excites me. I don't think I've shown my best out there. He's a very good fighter. He's fought for the UFC title. You know, he's, he's leaving the UFC in the top 10 and he's coming over. And he's been a very exciting fighter in his career. Uh, so beating someone like this is just going to help, help build my name and skyrocket me. Yeah, we are here in my home. Where I live, where I rest, I spend time with my family. You? You? <laughs> my favorite place. Um, my name is Yana Santos, I'm Tiago's wife, and I'm a fighter as well. He's my main coach. I'm always listening to uh, his advice. Uh, now we spend most of the time together, and I think it uh, helps so much for a more strong relationship. Like, if she has fight, I take care of her. When I have fight, she take care of me. We try to do it in the best way possible. I feel happy that I overcome, and I'm still here fighting, doing what I love to do. I always have big fights, yeah. It motivates me, you know. I need that. I need that adrenaline. So I feel very motivated for this fight. I know he's a tough opponent. He was the, the last season champion. So it motivates me more. Especially do my debut against him. Couldn't be better. He gonna feel this different. It's a new challenge for me. And it's make me motivated to go forward, you know. Keep focus. I'm preparing myself, my mind, everything. I want to take the belt and I want to take one million dollar. Up next. Larissa Pacheco shocks the world in one of the biggest upsets in MMA history. Larissa! Then, we'll take a look at her first opponent for the 2023 season. On April 7th, 2023, the heavyweights and women's featherweights will make their way to the cage for PFL 2 in Las Vegas, Nevada. In the 2022 PFL World Championship, Kayla Harrison was poised to win her third straight belt in the women's lightweight division. 
but it was the Brazilian dark horse, Larissa Pacheco, who stunned the MMA world. Larissa Pacheco just pulled off one of the biggest upsets in the history of our sport. I'm not here to be mediocre. I'm not here to be second. I'm not here to be the best in this organization or another organization. I'm here to be the greatest of all time. And every fight I have is another step closer to that. The number one thing she possesses now is confidence. And people don't put enough respect on the mental side of fighting. If you get in a cage and lock the door, you need to be real confident in yourself. And I think she has that now. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Obviously, uh, we're very excited about what's coming up, but I wanted to start the conversation with our main event. And Kayla, this is being billed as your biggest rivalry in the PFL. It's the third time you fought Larissa Pacheco, but I think it's safe to say, even though you beat her twice, she is a very different fighter on a five-fight winning streak that includes five finishes. What happens if Kayla Harrison gets hit by the power we've seen from Larissa Pacheco? I mean, can you call it a rivalry if you've never won a round? I don't know if that's fair. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on Larissa. It's not a rivalry. You know, just because you don't see me get hit in a fight doesn't mean I don't get hit, you know? I, I train hard. I train harder than, than pretty much anyone I know, and I put in the work so that on fight night, fight. it looks easy. There's a single leg attempt here from Kayla. Pacheco's on the neck! Kayla Harrison had to roll out of that choke attempt, and now Larissa Pacheco finds herself on top. I get hit. I'm not worried about getting hit. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to instill my will one round at a time, one minute at a time, one exchange at a time, one breath at a time. Beautiful grappling exchanges there. Oh, triangle. Here's a triangle chip. She's got it behind She's got the lock. step. She's got it locked on. There's a chink in the armor, potentially, for Kayla Harrison. Eu quero tanto me tornar campeã quanto eu quero essa revanche. Eu acho que ela já tá na vantagem, já ganhou duas vezes. Acho que agora é minha vez. Shaco going to work on the body, heavy hands, as she tries to maintain top position for the final 30 seconds of this round. And there's two right hands. Tell you what, Pacheco did her homework for this one. Me preparei para isso, então é essa é a meta. Hammer fist from the top here. Larissa Pacheco going to work again. A lot of gas been used in this fight. Amazing pace. Pacheco taking one last breath before the final 30 seconds. We'll go to the final bell. An incredible women's lightweight world championship wow. bout. Larissa Pacheco and Kayla Harrison hug it out after an epic battle. A much more subdued Kayla Harrison, clearly exhausted from a grueling back and forth battle. Larissa! Pacheco! Larissa Pacheco just pulled off one of the biggest upsets in the history of our sport. The belt around Larissa Pacheco's shoulder. PFL CEO Pete Murray and President of Fighter Operations Ray Seffo and a $1 million check. After winning the 2022 Women's Lightweight Championship belt and a million dollars, Pacheco went home to Brazil to celebrate her monumental upset. Eu me sentindo realizada com tudo isso. É, às vezes, às vezes ainda é meio que inacreditável, ainda é uma coisa meio, sei lá, fora assim, foge, né? Às vezes demora para para eu poder identificar realmente o que aconteceu. Mas eu já estou conseguindo me acostumar, né? Como campeã, como vencedora. Eu trabalhei muito para isso e esse é o resultado do que? Do fruto de todo esse trabalho. Sair de um lugar de onde você quase não tem perspectiva de nada e chegar num lugar onde eu cheguei não é, é, é de fato é um em um milhão. Eu passei dez anos, mais de dez anos, me dedicando ao esporte passando por milhares de dificuldades, tanto financeiras quanto físicas, né? lesões, estrutura. 
foi poder chegar em casa, ver minha mulher me receber, me receber de braços abertos, feliz. Esse foi o momento mais significativo para mim. As Pacheco prepares for the 2023 season, she'll transition into PFL's new women's featherweight division, giving her the chance to become the first two-division PFL champion in history. Her first opponent in the PFL 2's co-main event is the 16-5 former Bellator champion out of Canada. Strong right hand there from Bud. Julia the Jewel Bud. Julia Bud! Change tactics and go for the trip. Manages to get it. Good shot. The right hook. Oh! Take down by Bud. She's got it tight. In a 2022 championship showcase bout, Bud faced powerhouse Aspen Ladd. A hook from Aspen Ladd. Yeah, they're getting busier here at the end of this round. It's swinging away to the final bell. Aspen Ladd and Julia Bud giving the fans their money's worth. Aspen Ladd. Bud will now take on the new champ, Marisa Pacheco, for her first fight in the 2023 PFL season. Another exciting prospect and PFL's newest addition to the women's featherweight division, Aspen Ladd makes her 2023 PFL season debut against Ukraine's Olena Kolznik. signing with the PFL, I had zero hesitations. The seasonal format, that's something that I've not experienced and never been able to experience in MMA. I'm used to being on call 24-7 all the time. You never know when your next fight's gonna be. They can shelf you for four months and want you to find a two weeks notice. I'm excited to do it and excited to experience it, but also there's gonna be a more careful element than I've had to do in the past. Positives of fighting at 145 versus 135. I've wanted to do this for years, and actually being able to do it, and not on short notice, nothing, it, it's amazing. But the fact that I'm not starving 24-7, I don't have to run 10 miles a day, and I can actually lift weights again is amazing. I feel healthy, I feel excited, I got energy. And just not having that stress on me going into it, like knowing like this is, this is gonna be bad. It, I couldn't be happier, like it removed the worst part of fighting for me. Ante Dilia went all the way to the championship in 2021, losing to Bruno Capeloza. In 2022, he came back with a vengeance, sweeping the season en route to becoming the 2022 PFL heavyweight champion of the world. That man right there is walking trouble. He's a very intense man. He does not say a lot outside of the cage, inside the cage. This guy is loud and loves to look for the finish. Absolutely relentless. Pick him up and put him down. Violent round and pound from the Croatian. Welcome in, fight fans, to the 2021 PFL World Championships. For Bruno Capeloza or Ante Delia, season three will end with a belt and a one million dollar prize. Oh, there's a big oh, shot here. Bilo mi je teško nakon prvog poraza se vratiti, to bi bilo najteže, ali težak trenutak u mojoj karijeri. Last season to be in the finals and be that close, literally one or two punches and winning a world championship. There is a mental hurdle to get over for any fighter. In the 2022 PFL Championship, 
Dilia finished Mateus Scheffel with a TKO two minutes and 52 seconds into the first round. Ante, walking trouble. Dilia. Walking trouble. He fought valiantly when he fell short in last year's heavyweight championship, but now he's back and he's confident he's gonna get the job done this time. Nate's got to respect that left hook in particular from Scheffel. Wow, they're swinging away. Oh! He shoots a takedown here. And this is where Ante hits a lot of his takedowns. Backed him up with the left hook there. And the uppercut snuck through. Big flurry! Ante Dillia goes to work! Oh! Big hurt. He's hurt. And Ante Dillia with a heavyweight championship! Knocks out Mateusz Scheffel! One shot is all it takes. In 2023, Dilia begins his mission to become a two-time heavyweight champion in PFL 2's main event against new heavyweight challenger, Jorgen De Castro. I have the power to shut people out to separate your, your soul from your bodies. I come forward, I come to take your head off. Is everything gonna be with a bad intention? So my fight either gonna be five minutes of madness or gonna be 15 minutes of bloody. I wanna fight the champ, I wanna fight the toughest guy you have. I find something inside me that, that drives me, that fire, that, and I have to prove that I, I belong here, so I I'm truly believe I'm just getting started. Joining Dilia in the 2023 PFL Heavyweight Division is a group of powerful knockout artists, including 2021 PFL champion Bruno Capeloza. Bruno Capeloza pounding away on Jamel Jones, who turtles up. Capeloza is championship bound. And six foot seven, Hainan the Problema Ferreira. Next, Olivier Aubin Mercier takes on the biggest signing in PFL history. Hurricane Shane Burgos in his first fight of the 2023 season. On April 14th, the lightweights and welterweights will make their 2023 season debut during PFL 3 in Las Vegas, Nevada. In the main event, PFL's newest star, Hurricane Shane Burgos, will attempt to take down 2022's lightweight champion of the world, Olivier Aubin Mercier. In the 2022 championship, Mercier had one of the highlights of the year. Four minutes and 40 seconds into the second round, the Canadian gangster unleashed a furious right hook that won him the belt and $1 million. And now introducing the Canadian gangster, Olivier Aubin Mercier. to the gloves and we are underway. Southpaw stand for both men. A couple of straight lefts to the body early from Stevie Ray. Low kick there, almost caught by Stevie Ray. And another from OAM. Oh, there's a nice shot. Big left hand there from OAM on the counter. Ray now catches a kick. Tries to get himself onto the back of OAM and for now is there. Let's see if he can hit the, a takedown from here. This is Stevie's best position. If he's able to hit it, wow, oh, big there trouble. it is. Well done. Right oh. away. And Stevie Ray gets onto the back of OAM. Trying to soften him up with some left hands. Yeah, Stevie doing a great job with some ground and pound here. Both of these men, very, very powerful lightweights. Oh, look at this, excellent escape. All the way up and out. Nice work there by Olivia Albert-Messier. 
cognitively knows it's oh, oh. right hand lands and Olivia Albert Messier wow. with the check hook knocks out Stevie Ray for a lightweight championship. What a right hook! Stevie just didn't see it coming. Olivier, oh Mercier. Aubin Mercier, a protege of MMA legend George St. Pierre, is on a six fight winning streak and has yet to lose in the PFL. There was a point in your mixed martial arts career where you switched from just being uh, Olivier to being the Canadian gangster. It was a pretty bad, <laughs> bad fight, but gangster do whatever he wants, so I don't care. I want them to hate me. That's, that's the Canadian kind of gangster way. Why did you take on that moniker? Everybody say that, but the name chose you. You don't choose a name, you know? The gangster life chose me. Whoa! It's just a big joke about how people they take themselves a little bit more too seriously. It's fit well with me. Like you said, I like humor. This was a perfect fit for me. George St. Pierre, who's from Montreal, one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time, has inspired you and has helped you in your career. How has he done that? That's the reason why I started watching MMA. It's, uh, it's because of him. Three years after I started MMA, I met him, and uh, he became a friend, he became a hero, he became a mentor. I've always been a friend with Olivier uh, since the beginning. I witnessed him early on in his uh, career. When I was looking at him, I knew that he was very gifted. I saw that he had all the quality to become uh, one day a champion. I want him to impose his will. Oh! And I think that's what's going on in the fights. He's dictating where the fight goes, and he's dictating the pace, the strikes, positions, and he's getting the victories. The champion now faces one of the most explosive and entertaining fighters in the world, Hurricane Shane Burgos, PFL's newest lightweight acquisition. I'm Hurricane Shane Burgos, fighting out of Monroe, New York. Training out of Tiger Shulman's at Animal Park, New Jersey. Uh, it's the first gym I've ever trained at, and the only gym I've ever trained at, really. I found the local Tiger Shulman's in my, in my neighborhood. I've been here since I was 15 years old, so 17 years I've been here. It's a whole different beast with this one. Not only am I moving up a weight class, but I'm also doing four fights in seven months. That's a that's a struggle in and of itself and a, and a challenge I'm up for and I'm excited for. Uh, it's a mental, grueling, physical test and I'm excited to put my, my body, my mind, all that to the test and I 100% believe in myself. I, I know I'll come out on top. I've had to sacrifice my body. I, I've had surgeries before. I've had, I've gone to the ringer physically and uh, mentally for this sport. And this is, this is my life. This is every, this, I love this. I, I eat, sleep, and breathe this shit. My focus solely is on OAM right now. Um, who's next or whatever that? I'm not, I'm not focused on any of that. My, my focus is him and taking him out. He's a champion from last season. I'm looking at this like this is my title fight. This is the finale in my eyes. So I'm telling him to bring the belt because I'm taking it out. So it's gonna be a banger. I mean, he's on a on a six fight win streak. Uh, he won his last fight by knockout, so I'm hoping that he comes into this one trying to knock me out. I'm really hoping that he goes for that and he doesn't try to just take me down the whole time. And we're the main event for a reason. You know what I mean, this is the fight that everyone wants to see. I was I was at his last fight. It was it was a great fight. It was a great knockout. I really hope that gives him confidence in his hands. I've only had three losses in the UFC, and every single one of those fights were competitive. I got a fight of the night, and I feel like those fights could have went either way. So, uh, I mean, I, I do take some pride in knowing that I've never been shut out. I've never gotten my ass whooped completely, you know what I mean? Like, some guys have gotten just completely outclassed. That, that's never been me. First one, I'm just going to treat like a regular fight. The second camp, obviously, gotta, <laughs> it's got to have to be a little bit different. You kind of go into that first fight, you want to get it done as quick as possible because you don't want to have bumps and bruising because you're fighting again six weeks later. So. Uh, that second camp is really gonna have to revolve around how that first fight goes. But I'm just thinking about how grueling it's gonna be, but uh, it's gonna be 100% worth it. Four fights, four wins, a million dollars in the bank. Yeah, 
I'm 100% ready for anybody. I'm focused fully on this season. I'm, I'm healthy, I'm all good to go, and uh, all gas, no breaks. The 2023 lightweight roster also includes 2021 champion Hausch the Warhorse Manfio, 2022 finalist Stevie Ray, fan favorite Clay Collard, and two-time PFL lightweight champ Natan Schult. Coming up, can the Swedish Denzel win another world title? in one of the fiercest divisions in the PFL. Sadabusi spent four years working toward the welterweight championship belt. His championship opponent was Delano the Postman Taylor, an impressive young fighter from the PFL Challenger Series. and those long-range strikes in this fight. Welcome to Senegal. After claiming the welterweight championship, C traveled to his family's native Senegal to celebrate his title and give back to local villages. A little bit of nice. My grandmother, uh, my aunt, my mother's uh, older sister, and her son. We just met them all here, and just that's the moment you just captured. Mom hasn't seen her mom in a while, you know? to see how you did with the martial arts uh, and everything that you built here. It's amazing to see. Welcome to Alexan. C now faces the top prospect out of the Middle East. Jarrah Al Salawi to begin the 2023 season on April 14th.
In the welterweight division, there are two major title contenders out of Dagestan. 2018 PFL champion Magomed Magomed Karimov and the undefeated Magomed Umalatov. Delano Taylor may have had the most exciting journey of 2022 with his climb from the Challenger Series all the way to the championship. But 2023 could prove to be his biggest challenge yet. I'm ready. Let's run it. The 2023 PFL season is poised to be the most intense yet. All six champions return. Former challengers are back. And new names are ready to stake their claim on a PFL title. It's the toughest test in MMA. Four fights in eight months. It's the PFL season. And it's more than a fight.